Taki Konoe is a man who dedicated his career to his love for basketball. Born in 1967 in Kagoshima Prefecture, Inoue took a liking to basketball and drawing, being the captain of the basketball club in junior high. But in 1987, he dropped out of college to pursue a career in manga. He made his debut with Purple Kaede, which is the predecessor to his first manga and cultural classic, Slam Dunk. Inoue mixed his two favorite things together, basketball and drawing, and with this manga, he raised the popularity of basketball in Japan exponentially instantly becoming a success. Inoue went on to create the critically acclaimed manga Vagabond, which you've probably heard of. But while working on Vagabond, he started another manga, Real. A story about not just basketball, but wheelchair basketball. This is why you should read, in my opinion, Inoue's best work, Real. Real starts with one of our protagonists, Tomomi Nomiya, a high school dropout who came back to school. He then talks to a girl he liked in the first year and admits that he was her secret admirer. And then from that, we meet our next protagonist, Takahashi, who's the captain of the basketball team now. Nomiya congratulates him with a kick and goes to the locker room to pick up his shoes. The people he meets there ask him what's up with his hair and he says it's the Kobe Bryant look. But then he leaves the school, but right at the gate, he takes a shit. After that, he meets a girl who can't walk. We soon learn that the reason she can't walk is because of him. He went out and asked her to go on a ride with him, and they crashed, leaving Nomiya nearly unharmed, but leaving the girl paralyzed for life. This type of stuff is what I like about Real so much. It's real with his characters. As Takahiko describes it, he writes in a way more like a documentary than a fantasy story. He uses real life situations and feelings and molds them into his stories and characters perfectly. Using wheelchair basketball, a sport that doesn't get much love or praise, to write a story with intriguing characters and themes. It's a story where the three main characters deal with self-acceptance and journey, major major parental problems, and overall being disabled. And I think one of the main characters, Takahashi, former self-proclaimed A-rank, and captain and star of the Nishi High basketball team, has an exaggerated normal mindset of people's views on disabled people. You don't expect them to do pretty much anything and you pity them. But real challenges that mindset. The disabled characters are the characters with the most heart and are the most determined to not only be the best they can, but change people's thought process on the disabled. Throughout the story, the audience learns and grows with the main characters and their perspective on disabled people change. All while watching Takahashi dealing with his newfound label of disability, Nomiya's path and journey to becoming a better person, and Kiyoharu's goal of leading the Tigers. Each story is incredibly interesting and all flow into each other with how great the world building is. Now, without spoiling, I want to briefly go over the main characters. Nomiya is my favorite out of the three, just edging out Kiyoharu. His journey is the one that resonated with me the most, with him trying to find his path. Character journeys like Nomiya's are some of my favorites ever, and I think Nomiya does it incredibly well. With his obsession for basketball and desire to go pro, because to him, basketball is happiness. Another one of my favorite parts of Nomiya is his desire to become a better person despite how many times he might fail at it, as well as his survivor's guilt from the accident with the girl that led him to quitting the basketball team and dropping out but he still continues to see natsumi as he feels like he needs to dedicate his life to her despite his lack of understanding of what she's going through only knowing that she's going through horrible things because of him all he wants to do is get rid of his guilty conscience inoue leaves a disconnect for the reader here providing almost no information about natsumi but focusing on nomiya's self-centered guilt loop of she didn't deserve this why me what will i do with my life he makes the reader unsure of who to sympathize with this same same guilt also seeps into other parts of Nomiya's life. He's a high school dropout, can't play basketball with his team, can't hold down a job, and overall can't find happiness. For all intents and purposes, he's adrift, astray. Some of this is padded by his interactions with Togoa Kiyoharu, a wheelchair basketball player, but most of it is funneled into an unhealthy obsession over Natsumi. He has no idea how she feels, nor does he really try to find out. His obsession is completely self-serving. When he goes to watch what would be his final basketball tournament in high school, he's forced to face his self-inflicted wounds. This is the first time we see Nomiya face to face with the damage his guilty conscience has inflicted upon him and his life. He openly weeps as he watches his team lose. The season is over and he wasn't a part of it. Nomiya's sadness is one the reader can empathize with. Many things come to an end at the high school and Nomiya wasn't a part of the closure that he would have had if he played his final game. He will likely never play basketball in the same capacity again and the whole this realization leaves resonates with memories and transitioning from adolescence. This is further elaborated on when he goes to visit Natsumi in Nagano. When Nomiya sees how hard she's trying and how happy she has become, 
his false purpose begins to crumble. He begins to realize that he was more dependent on Natsumi than she was on him. He had used her as an excuse to stand still. So on his way back, he declares to become a better person. He even cuts off his amazing hair and starts anew. Second is Kiyoharu, the prodigy of a sprinter turned into a disabled wheelchair basketball player. I don't want to spoil Kiyo's backstory heavily as while you're reading it, you'll probably get the Bex experience. His motivation to be faster than anyone, an ironic statement considering he's, you know, in a wheelchair, but his aspirations and goals slash motives for not only himself, but the Tigers. How he devotes himself to his sport and his craft moves me not only to perfect my craft in the sports I play, but improve myself not only in sports, but personality. His meeting with Nomiya changes the course of his life, as well as Nomiya's. If he didn't do this, I couldn't imagine what his life would be like. But his path really changes when he meets Mitsuru Nagano, who inspires him after he loses to someone one-on-one -on -one for the first time. He rejoins the Tigers to improve, in order to beat Nagano. Kiyoharu is also driven to excellence. Inoue uses the dichotomy between playing for fun and playing for greatness to create friction between Kiyoharu and some of his teammates. He wants to be as good at wheelchair basketball as he can possibly be, but some of his teammates think that there's no point because it's not the same as able-bodied sports. But Kiyoharu's unwillingness to accept this line of reasoning is another fairly progressive message for disability portrayal in any medium. His passion and dedication help to create a more fully realized character worth following. And a little side note, I love his star tattoo. It really symbolizes his ambition and plus it just looks really cool. Our final and last protagonist is Takahashi. Now, it took me a while to start liking Takahashi, but I think that's supposed to be on purpose. Takahashi is supposed to be extremely unlikable at first, as he's introduced as an antagonistic force to Nomiya. But what I really despised about Takahashi wasn't his annoying attitude and dumb remarks, but his ranking system. Classifying people based on an E to A system where the, the more popular you seem, the better you are, made me incredibly angry. Him using it subconsciously was even worse. But as he develops, oh man, does he become one of my favorite characters. I don't want to talk about his character much as you really have to read his journey for yourself, but just know he has some of the greatest emotional peaks in development I think I've ever seen. And his parental problems really, really hit. One of the best parts of Real is how in-depth it goes with its side characters. Shiratori is one of my favorite side characters ever, Takahashi's dad, Broom, and Izumi, and even flashback characters like Tora are all amazing. But the real best part of Real, I'm two for two for jokes now, man, I'm a comedic genius, is how it ties these multiple stories together in such a great way. Once again, I feel like experiencing Real with little to no knowledge of it is the best, so I'm going to be pretty vague with these descriptions. Real is a story with no good or bad, no heroes or villains. It's just about people in a town who want to better themselves and find their own path. And that's what I like about it so much. It uses characters that are just as lost as you to tell a beautifully written story. So please do me a favor and read real.